Very good. So now, uh, module eleven is about fire protection and prevention. We'll talk a little bit about fire uh, stairways and ladders as well. So what I will do is, uh, whenever I see that some of these uh, materials have been presented before, I'll just skip it so you guys can read it later. Uh, there are some videos that may be interesting and some uh, uh, other uh, facts that I would like to you know, bring to your attention again. So we have uh, OSHA um, general duty clause. Uh, I like to repeat this one uh, often because it, uh, it, it's an important uh, part of the OSHA regulations. It requires that employers provide to their employees a workplace that is uh, free from recognized uh, hazards that are likely to cause death or serious physical hazard to the employees. Uh, so, you know, you can be cited by uh, the general jury clause if there is no one violation, if, if there is no one regulation uh, that, that fits the hazard that you have on your job site. So employers should be responsible for the deployment and uh, maintenance of an effective fire protection program. Here, uh, the, the idea is to train the employees in what to do in case of a fire. Something occurs, you know, what are they going to do? Uh, is who's going to be responsible for putting that fire off? Um, you know, how to do a, a accounting of people, a head count, to make sure that everybody's in there and no one is uh, uh, inside the, the area. Fires and explosions kill more than 200 and injure more than 5,000 workers a year. Uh, some of you worked in, in gas industry, so you, you know the uh, seriousness of uh, fire and uh, explosions. Uh, we saw there, there was a, a recent fire, right, uh, in uh, Mobile, uh, Alabama, a, um, what was this, a, a, a uh, Explosion in Texas. Huh? Texas. Yeah, in Texas, Texas explosion. In Texas, an explosion in Texas, yeah. Uh, somebody told me about a, uh, an, an, a factory in Mobile that uh, got on fire uh, two days ago or so. I didn't really look into no, the I, news. I know, I heard about the one in Texas, which was a pyrotechnic. Build uh, factory. Okay, there was one. Uh, I think there was one with the, um, the things that you use for the grass. The uh, oh, the ammonia. Yeah, that was it. That was the. Uh, that was in Texas. Yeah. Was the uh, fertilizer. 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 Exactly. All right. So those those are uh, tragedies that uh, can uh, cause. Okay, what you're talking about is the two barges in the Mississippi that that uh, caught on fire. Okay. Full of uh, gas <laughs> Yeah. All right. The, 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 there was a, also a town, a complete town that got blown up uh, in uh, South America many, many years yeah. ago. It was a gas, uh, gas um, a leak that got on top of the, the, the area and then, you know, somebody ignited something and the whole thing mm -hmm. blew up. Uh, big tragedy. Anyway, uh, for for normal uh, businesses and, and, and uh, you know, the 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 plan to escape a fire should be posted where people can see it. There should be a exit route that is uh, divided into several areas. Uh, first is the, the escape from the room that you have. You have a, a corridor, and then you have a a, a place that takes you outside to a safe location. So the exit route should be continuous, should be unobstructed, should be free from uh, objects that can cost, you know, uh, people to stop by or, or not being able to escape uh, easily. So we have the exit access, like if we're in this room, the exit access will be obviously the door. Then we have the exit, that's a portion of the building that leads you to the outside, uh, to, to the discharge, and then the discharge is what takes you to the outside. You will need to have uh, markings, so people know where uh, exit doors are located and how to exit the building. Um, and whenever you have a door that seems to be an exit but it's not, you should have a, a marking saying, you know, this is not an exit, use uh, 
the appropriate uh, exit that will point you towards the area to escape. These uh, exit routes must be permanent and must be enough exits in the building to properly uh, do a quick escape of uh, everybody. Did, did we talk about the fire uh, and the, the the triangle factory fire? Didn't we? That uh, that started the whole OSHA movement when uh, employees in a factory uh, got burned and many, many people died because of that. It was, uh, what happened is they, they, they would have the exits blocked and they would lock the employees inside so they would be working and not taking, you know, time off. And then the whole thing came in fire and it, a lot of people died uh, because of that. And that's one of the, the, the accidents or the, the issues that started the whole OSHA regulations. Okay, so we need to have a, a, a discharge that takes us uh, directly to the street and uh, should be uh, easy to, to escape. It should not be locked from the inside. I mean, you should be able to get out. Most of the doors will be locked from the outside, so you can't get into the building, but you can uh, easily escape. Uh, in stores and that kind of things, they may have alarms, so to prevent people from stealing items and walking out the door, but still you can open uh, the door. So in those cases, they will say, you know, alarm will sound, I'm sure you guys are familiar with it. Uh, the door that connects any room to an exit must swing out in the direction of exit travel. You know, you, you don't want to be in a situation where you need to pull this door back and then you have, you know, 30 people behind you pushing, trying to exit. You want to be able to uh, exit easily from the room. So they should uh, always uh, open to the outside. Uh, the dimensions should be uh, such that, you know, people can exit easily. Ceilings must be at least seven and a half feet high. The, with no projection reaching a point less than six feet, eight inches. Uh, an exit must be at least 28 inches wide at all points. Um, you know, you, you don't want to have uh, situations like this where you have boxes or other items in your uh, exit route because then that will be a area where people will, will, will try to escape and get in panic mode and then uh, uh, that can cause more troubles. Here is a, a, an exit, uh, an, an example of an exit that has a bar, so you need to push the bar in order to open the door. You're coming from the outside, you're not able to get in, and then it will say, you know, an alarm will sound if you uh, open this door, so people are aware of uh, the, the uh, opening the door will sound as an alarm. If you can't see the door, uh, then you should have some uh, signs <coughs> that point you towards the direction of an exit. And more oftentimes you will have a, a cases where uh, doors that look like exit but they're not, so then you make a, a not an exit notice. The most remarkable I have ever seen is in Home Depot. Uh, they have cameras with sensors, and as you go near the door, you will hear, you know, a, 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 a system will come up and say, Stand away, this is not an exit, stand away. It's <laughs> my God, what the hell is going on here? You know, it looks like it's an access to the back uh, back of the store or something. I, I, I thought it was uh, interesting. Okay, uh, you need to have fire extinguishers, you need to have a, a emergency action plan, and you need to decide, you know, how is that going to be used. Uh, you need to have your, your, uh, a map of some sort that will tell you well from whatever you are, where is the closest uh, exit, uh, what to do in case of uh, an emergency. Like, uh, for example, uh, FIU has a really good system for emergency management. The, the phones will start making a noise, there will be a, um, a notification to the speaker systems, you can have uh, 
notice on your cell phones that they will they will send you text messages and tell you you know if there is a an emergency on the campus. So that that will will keep people alert of what, what's going on. Also, they have a zero tolerance for staying in the room. You know, uh, if if the alarm sounds, you're required to uh, gather your belongings and leave the building. They, they're not too happy if you stay in your office and say, well, you know, this is going to go away. <laughs> Don't do that. So, Doc, that's an application that FIU has that you can... Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah they, they do have a, a very good notification system for but It's an app that you can put on your phone? It's... Um, it's not, uh, I think they it's send it you. I think you have to sign for it. I, I, I used to have the... Um, uh, the steps in my uh, presentation. I, I don't think I have them anymore, but let me go uh, real quick. If you go to FIU-EDU, and then um, obviously on their website, they always have you know some sort of uh, notification about uh, emergencies. If something is going on, they, they do post it right here. So then uh, if you, we search here, emergency, system, they have um, emergency management. So they have here emergency alerts. There you go. FIU alerts is an emergency notification system that will notify registered users of emergency occurring or on or near FIU campuses using text message directed at their cell phone. Users receive alerts about hazardous weather, criminal threats, and other emergency situations. And then, you know, you can register your, your cell phone. They, they have a, a bunch of uh, things that they, they do. They, they also post on Facebook and Twitter. They go on the radio. Uh, they, this is what I was saying. The, the, the phone system will give you a notification. This one here, well, it does have a, a small screen, uh, so it will, it will show what type of emergency it is and what you need to do, you know, uh, leave the building or whatever. So th that's a, a, an example of a great a, um, emergency notification system. Uh, very helpful when, when we have the hurricane seasons. You know that uh, sometimes they they shut down the the campus, so they you, you get a notification. You know classes have been canceled. Uh, don't need to come, or if you're already in campus, you know go home. It have happened to me a couple of times when I moved from Maryland here. You know I wasn't uh, that that uh, up to speed with the hurricanes, and, and students would ask me, "Well, what do we do in case of a hurricane?" I don't know about you, but I'm going back to Maryland. So <laughs> <laughs> so that, that was my emergency response, man. <laughs> All right, uh, let's see. Fire prevention plans. Um, If you smoke, do so only in designated areas. Good housekeeping is another basic safety tip. Check out those janitor closets and other storerooms to make sure there are no flammables or combustibles improperly stored. Keep the areas clean, neat, and organized. Out of sight, out of mind is not good fire prevention. When storing oily rags, they must be stored in metal containers with a metal lid. If you store oily rags in cardboard or other containers, the oily rags can overheat and create spontaneous combustion and a fire. Keep electrical motors and other potential spark producing equipment free from paper, cardboard, or other combustibles. Motors need ventilation to dissipate heat, and if there's poor ventilation from trash or other debris, they can overheat, causing a fire. When using electrical equipment, use it only as intended. This means if you have an electrical receptacle with only two plugs, you can only plug in two electrical appliances. The use of octopus plugs to increase electrical outlets is a fire hazard and should not be used. Never use flexible cords as fixed wiring. 
This means don't staple cords to floors or walls. Don't run extension cords through doors or walls or other spaces. The hazard is the extension cords can rub up against the wall, creating a worn wire, and if overheated, it can cause a fire. Electricity can overheat from a variety of methods. Perhaps the amperage of the electricity is too high for the thickness of the wire in the cord. A short in one electrical appliance could cause the wire to overheat and burn. A cooling fan in a computer could cause the motor to overheat. There are many potential hazards, so you need to inspect your work area frequently and correct any potential hazard before it becomes a reality. Empty trash cans every day. Don't allow materials to pile up and become potential fire hazards. Learn where all the exits are located and that they aren't blocked. Many deaths have occurred over the years because exits were blocked and people couldn't get out in time. First of all, what you have to do, say for instance, you have a three-story building. In a three-story building, you have uh, employees on all three floors. You have to designate, uh, through the emergency operation manual, a, a fire warden on each floor. Now, his responsibility is to make sure that everybody on that floor gets out of that uh, building during an emergency, and they go to a pre-designated area outside the building. The, and, uh, and so the wardens can make a head count to, to ascertain if everybody got out of the building. If you have a fire sprinkler system installed, they should be checked frequently to make sure they are in the open position and ready to go in case of fire. If you do have sprinklers... That's interesting what, what he was saying, that, you know, you have to make sure that you have a plan to account for the number of people that uh, are in the building. So. When, when the emergency responders come, you can say, you know, how many people you have uh, unaccounted for. Any comments on that video we just saw? The, the, um, I was talking to someone that also worked in the petroleum business, and they do test their sprinkler system and their fire prevention system every now and then. The problem is it's very expensive because they have to shut down the operation in order to test this equipment, so that that's, uh, becomes really, really expensive. But, uh, yeah, but there, there, uh, I think that we need to bring to, because it's happening to us in many projects, fire sprinklers is not a fire suppressor. Fire sprinkler is designed to give you time to evacuate the areas. Mm -hmm. Now, it does suppress the fire a little bit, but it's meant primarily to allow the people to give so time to exit. That's why you change the you make it, let's say, a room that it has a one-hour rating, you can increase it to two hours rating by having a fire sprinkler system. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that it's when many people think, well, I have nothing to protect here. Right. Not really. Yeah, you, you have, have to, life to protect. You have to, you have to give the people time to evacuate. Right. Well, we saw the, the previous video how fast. Because that, one of the things is petroleum it. fires. If you put water, you just you just take the, the water, takes the burning gasoline and just keeps and moves it, yeah so most of the uh, chemical fires and petroleum fires they have to be fought about with chemicals mm -hmm. right you have to use the proper uh, right. system for the the type of fire and we will see a little bit of that uh, later on this is mark Steffick. i'm a research for well the, this is a a uh, short uh demonstrate the um video that <coughs> explains a little bit how the uh, some fire sprinklers work these are some that that get when when the head gets the heat or the the fire then uh, it breaks and and let the water coming out so that means it, if you have fire located under one sprinkler that's the one that will that will turn the water out and not the others other systems will, will trigger all the, the uh, heads on the same circuit to be going off at the same time. So it, it depends on the design. And uh, 
So it's not by smoke. Hmm? It's, it can't be triggered by smoke. No. So we always we always protest. You, you have the the, the electronic. You have the smoke, smoke detector. The electronic smoke detectors. That's the ones that go. Will it trigger the sprinkler though? In the smoke. If, no, it's wired. If they, too. if, 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 they, wired, are, if they, they are designed, they could, but it's it's more expensive. And what they do is they zone them. You don't want the whole thing to go in. Mm -hmm. Remember, the minute the sprinkler kick in, anything that is under the sprinklers is it's going to get wet. You yeah. have to just throw them away. Yeah. You're talking about carpet, electronic equipment, anything. TVs, anything. And yeah. that's why many of the, uh, where you have uh, electronic equipment and all that, it's a sealed place. And what they do is you have to evacuate immediately because what they do is that they seal and they put uh, nitrogen. They put uh, a nitrogen and, and takes out all the oxygen. So and, that turns the fire out. And of course, if there's any, any living thing there, it's gonna die. So it, it will not die by, it will die by suffocation. Okay, here at uh, this, uh, this table, shows employees uh, how to evacuate and uh, fight the small fire. You have different options. So you could have the fire sprinklers over there, the fire extinguishers over there, and then uh, train your employees in how to use them. Or you can have them for the uh, emergency responders to use them, or you don't have them at all. I mean, it, it depends on what uh, type of uh, uh, plan you have them uh, in, in in, in place. The uh, fire extinguishers should be easy to see, easy to, to reach, you know, you, you don't want to have them uh, blocked behind uh, objects or uh, and needs to be also inspected on a yearly basis. What we were talking about before is the type of uh, uh, conduction, the type of fire that you have, and then the, the different um, fire extinguishers that you will use for the different type of fires. So you have class A, ordinary uh, combustible solids like uh, carpet, wood, cloth, paper, that kind of thing. Then class B, liquids, gases, greases, type C, so electrical equipment, type D, uh, combustible metals, uh, powders, you know, uh, uh, fire, um, fireworks, that kind of thing. So you have different type of uh, uh, extinguishers for that. And the different type of extinguishers will have different elements inside. Some of them are water-based, some have foam, carbon dioxide, dry chemicals. So depending on what type of fire you have, you should have this right type of uh, uh, fire extinguisher. So depending on what you have in that room, what are you storing, you should have the correct type of uh, fire extinguisher for the potential hazard that you have. Alert! Before using a fire extinguisher, ensure that someone notifies the fire department, alerts others about the fire, begins evacuating others from the premises. Fire extinguishers are for controlling small fires before they have a chance to spread. Before using one, make sure that you have a clear escape you are familiar with the operating instructions of the fire extinguisher and that the fire extinguisher you have is suitable for the fire you're facing. Before using the extinguisher on a fire, look at the fire class symbols on the front label to make sure the extinguisher you have is suitable for the type of fire you're facing. The most common classes of fires are A, B, C, and K. Class A fires involve common combustibles like wood, paper, and tires. Class B fires involve flammable liquids like gasoline and petroleum oil. Class C ratings involve energized equipment or things that are plugged in like appliances, computers, televisions, and electric machinery. Class K fires involve cooking oils and greases like vegetable fats. Once you've determined that the extinguisher is the correct type for the hazard, proceed to operate the extinguisher using the pass technique to control and extinguish the fire. First, hold the extinguisher upright and pull the pin. Next, stand 8 to 10 feet from the fire and aim the nozzle at the base of the fire. Do not get too close or aim the nozzle too high. Once the nozzle is aimed at the base of the fire, squeeze the levers together to begin discharge of the fire extinguishing agent. Maintain your distance from the fire and sweep the nozzle from side to side, 
sweeping three to six inches beyond the right and left edges of the fire. Discharge the extinguisher until contents are exhausted to prevent reignition. Look <coughs> around the fire to confirm it is completely extinguished. Your quick action can save lives and protect property. Using the fire extinguisher properly is only one part of a fire safety plan. For more information and training videos, go to www.femalifesafety.org. So obviously you want to have uh, planning for emergencies. So if you know you're going to store chemicals uh, or, or greases or combustible materials, you know, use, select the proper fire extinguisher for the type of uh, uh, hazard that you may have. Then uh, besides the type of uh, a, a fire that can be handled, there's also sizes depends on the size the capacity of the fire extinguisher itself. So then you have uh, ratings, uh, 1, 2, up to 40, and a class A. So it, 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 it tells you how big of a fire can be handled with the extinguisher. For a extinguisher, it should be able to extinguish about twice as much as a 2A. So that that's, uh, gives you also a, a size uh, reference. You must maintain them in uh, good operating conditions, charge, ready to go. Uh, you should have an annual check to uh, make sure that it's uh, properly used and keep records of your uh, maintenance. Uh, then there's some requirements for having uh, fire extinguishers on site. A fire extinguisher rated not less than 2A shall be provided for each 3,000 square feet of the protected building area or major fraction thereof. Travel distance from any point of the protected area to the nearest fire extinguisher shall not exceed 100 feet. One or more fire extinguishers rated not less than 2A shall be provided on each floor. In multi-story buildings, at least one fire extinguisher shall be located at gates and two stairways. Um, fire extinguisher rated not less than 10B shall be provided within 50 feet or whatever, uh, more than five gallons of flammable or combustible liquids or five pounds of flammable gas are being used on the job site. So, you know, if you have a flammable um, combustible liquids, you need to be, uh, you, you need to have a, a 10B fire extinguisher on site uh, very close. Uh, employees need to be trained uh, in the use of the extinguisher if, you, if that's the plan that you call for. If the, the employees are going to handle the fire, then you need to train them in how to deal with the, with the fire, how to use the fire extinguisher properly, you know, the pass technique that we just saw in the video. Um, so in summary, you need to have enough exits, you need to have a uh, market Exit doors that are not uh, exit should be marked as well. You need to have a fire prevention plan on site and then train your employees in how to use the uh, fire extinguishers. What happened here? There's no fire but explosion.
Any comments on that? Interesting, huh? We have uh, tires and, and, and trucks and sometimes require maintenance and if the people do not use proper procedures then that can occur. Then uh, we go to stairways and ladders. Uh, before we, we, we had uh, someone present that the proper angle for a ladder should be a quarter um, horizontal for uh, the, the height. So one quarter of the height should be the horizontal location. And uh, you, you can reach a safe angle by uh, putting the, the end of the ladder on your feet and then stand your, your arms. When you touch the, the ladder, that angle, it gives you a good stable angle for, for the ladder. Uh, you want that ladder to be tied to the, to the uh, structure so it will not uh, slip away and then you fall. We saw some of the funny videos where people got really hurt because the, the uh, ladder will slide. So you want to have that tied over there and you want to have at least three feet uh, over the point of uh, uh, where where you where you uh, land the landing point. So if you can count three rounds, that's about three feet also. Now they have to do the advertisement thing, eh? We saw a portion of this in another video. Somebody action! Somebody help! Accident? Somebody help! Somebody help! Accident? There's no accident. The company should have replaced that ladder years ago. I knew I shouldn't have reached over like that. And why isn't there a strict policy about two people doing a job like this? Kind of uh, shocking, but uh, it's a reality. You, know, you can fall from one of those stairs. Uh, you, you, you know, there's simple procedures. Don't step on the on the last uh, step of the ladder. Don't overreach. You know, keep a, a safe, secure ladder. You know, prevent uh, these kind of things. If you're stepping on the top of the ladder, that becomes unstable, and it's easy to to fall from from above. residential home construction. It's all about time or not enough of it. And money, making every penny count. But maybe it's time to start thinking about something else. Hey, Lucky. Yeah? I need you to get the nail gun off the roof. All right, no probs. You know what you're doing with the ladder, right? Yeah, yeah. And get the big ladder. <laughs> How many mothers do I need? He was such a know-it-all. You could never tell him anything. Look, I don't have time to babysit. Look, it's tough. It's tough getting people who know what they're doing. If they know what they're doing, they're working. But he was a good kid. He tried. I see his parents at Temple every week. I don't know what to say. He's gone. And I have to live with that for the rest of my life. Always place the ladder one foot out for every four up. Make sure the ladder extends three feet above the top and tie it off. You're a pro. There's always time to do it right. Simple rule, can save your life. Huh? Okay, um, 
We saw uh, also some time before that every time we have 19 inches uh, breaking elevation, we should have a ladder or steps or some way to get access. Uh, stairways, uh, handrails are both a ways to protect people when uh, going up and down ladders. The top rail should be able to sustain uh, 200 pounds of force. Uh, you know, here's a, a stairway that does not have uh, guards, so people can, can easily fall from from there. <coughs> Stairways with uh, four or more risers or higher than 30 inches must be equipped with at least one handrail. Uh, here we have a picture of you know stairs that does not have any handrails, and they, this happened more often than what we would like to see. Actually, I was in a job site where we had that situation in a four building, four story tall. And you know, you, you're going up that stairs and the wind starts to blow, and you, you, you feel scared about falling down. Actually, we had an inspector going on. He said, I'm not going up there, you know. It, uh, he hasn't, he's right, uh, it was an unsafe practice. That was not here in the US, it was down in Venezuela. Anyway. So you, you also want to have a uniform uh, very, uh, uh, height in your, on your stairs. I don't know if it ever happened to you that you find one step that is longer or shorter and then you, you, you tend to trip because your brain is used to a certain distance and then all of a sudden you throw off by a uh, asymmetrical step. So that, that's uh, important to maintain uh, the same rise and depth. Uh, pan stairs uh, that are sometimes temporarily used in uh, construction sites should be filled with the material at least to the top of the pan so that will be you know, safe for people to go up and down. We talked uh, a little bit about the landings when you have uh, a high uh, uh, stairs that is going up. Service landing must be at least 30 inches deep, 22 inches wide and at every 12 feet or less vertical rise. So that, that way people have a place to stop and rest and move on. If you have a door, the, uh, the, the platform should extend at least 20 inches from the uh, swing of the door. You, you want to you know, prevent people from uh, falling down the stairs. That, uh, uh, that can cause severe, serious injury. I don't know if you have ever had a friend or a family member that has fallen down the stairs, and as a result of that, you know, you get uh, bones breaking and hips and back, and, and it, it does really uh, create a, a lot of problems. So you want to maintain that uh, ladder uh, or that stair in, in good conditions. Uh, Whoa! Confined spaces can be dangerous. Always test the air for hazardous gases before entering. We recommend a forecast monitor with a sample draw pump. Click below to order yours today. Yeah. OSHA has a series of regulations related to ladders, and they're based on the various types of ladders that might be used. The first thing is that OSHA requires that all of the manufacturer's requirements be followed when using a ladder. Secondly, then, ladders must be properly inspected before use to make sure that they are not broken or parts are missing or things like that. Then the standards relate to how a ladder has to be set. A ladder always has to be set on a good level surface and must be adequately secured. Then there are regulations on how the ladder might be used. A good example is a step ladder where employees are not allowed to stand on the top step of a stepladder. Uh, they're also not allowed to use a stepladder in a leaning position, closed up and leaning against a wall. On straight ladders, or what we might call an extension ladder, uh, OSHA also requires very specific uh, safety rules be followed. And some of those include that the ladder set at a proper angle, which is normally uh, one out horizontally for every four feet vertically. 
They also have to Here you, you can see, see yes, yes, the ladder on his feet is going to kind of stand in the arm to a surface to get the right arm. Above. The ladder has to be secured so that the ladder won't shift while the employee is moving from the ladder. It also must stick up high enough, about three feet above the landing, to make sure that the employee has a handhold or a place that they can grab the ladder so when they swing onto the ladder, they can make sure that their hands are properly used. Then there are standards related to an employee reaching out away from a ladder and how an employee may stay within the ladder uh, to make sure that they don't fall. Each ladder then has very specific standards uh, related to its various construction issues. Some companies will paint the top uh, three feet in a red or something so the employees have a way to visually, you know, uh, make sure that they, they, they are uh, on the safe side. You know, uh, ladders must be kept uh, in safe condition. You know, sometimes you, you have ladders that are very unstable. Those should be thrown away, uh, removed from the side. Uh, don't put some of those together to create a, a larger surface. You know, sometimes that is not safe. Uh, we see people putting together structures like these that are just waiting to collapse, you know. Uh, secure ladders uh, to the structures so they, they will not uh, leap away. Uh, here we have a, a ladder, it's a double type uh, to, to handle more employees, some of those going up and some going down, so that, that's an example where you have a larger number of people. Don't paint the ladders, uh, that can, you know, uh, cover some imperfections in the ladder. We've talked about the angle. Make sure it's uh, tied uh, to the structure and 3 feet above the, uh, the landing. Here it's uh, for, for you know, emergency exits and that kind of things. They have different requirements. Uh, here we have a, a ladder that is very close to a electrical circuit. So obviously that's a unsafe condition that can create a hazard. And uh, most people who work with uh, electricity will use then a, a ladder that is made of uh, fiberglass, so it will not be conducting electricity. Never stop on the top side. You know, use the cross bracing, make sure that the, la the ladder is uh, completely extended. Check for missing rungs for other damages in the uh, ladder that can cause um, accidents. And of course, the training, you know, tell your employees that this is important, that they need to follow certain easy procedures, uh, you know, very basic steps to make sure that the getting in and out of a ladder does not result in, a, in an accident. Uh, here's a, a current issue of um, from OSHA. Uh, don't remember exactly what this uh, I was talking about here. It, it has to do with one willful violation for allowing employees to work on elevated surface without fire protection. The citation carries thirty-five thousand dollars penalty. So this can be expensive, you know not following uh, the rules and regulations. 